Good evening, everyone. Here is Bruce Newman from Bruce Newman Academy. And today, we're going to receive a very special guest, Miss Catherine Van Hogen, which is a holistic healer from Norway. Good evening, Catherine. Good evening. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. It's our great pleasure. First of all, maybe you could introduce yourself. Could you tell us which kind of healer are you? Um, I am a healer uh, who uh, um, because of my beliefs in healing, I would say I'm a holistic healer because there are so many ways to heal in this wonderful creation of ours. There are, uh, the goal is to be healed, I guess, for everyone. <laughs> the best version of themselves. Uh, but the path is so vertical. It's so many ways you can go to heal yourself, to enlighten yourself, to be stronger in who you are. And so I want to define it to one thing, because I like this and that, but I think holistic healing summing up the possibility of, of healing as a whole with different angles and yeah i i holistic healer when we're speaking about holistic healing of course we need to make some connection with the universe and the universal influences yeah. Uh, which brings me to my very first question. Catherine, how does having faith in the universe's limitless power, this universe's limitless power, strengthen individuals? I think believing in some great spirit of the universe, a uh, mind behind creation that has uh, all compassing powers, all compassing mind fields. A limitless God will strengthen your beliefs in believing in bigger dreams than without a God. Because uh, if you can dream big, uh, the God of the universe or the great spirit uh, always can dream bigger. So in this way, I think dream big. And if you add faith to your dreams, believe to dream even bigger. And let God surprise you when you dreamt your biggest dream. <laughs> accomplishment well, the biggest dream you can picture yourself dreaming then God can show up in your life and give you even a bigger dream because he is limitless and we have a limitation within the life of creation I think <laughs> when we're speaking about compassion because uh, you, you, you made rising up this, uh, this term um, would you say that we can connect compassion, that what psychologists call empathy? Yes, I think we can learn to mirror empathy, to understand empathy if we don't have empathy. So we can behave empathic if we don't have empathy. And some of us are born um, with love in our hearts and like empathy is feeling love for yourself and extending that to love for others. Uh, having a own fundamental uh, basic core values in your soul that has a picture of love on the inside. So you can read people through empathy, compassion, uh, 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 with, within the limited... Um, of, of course, you can't love someone to love you if they don't want to. And then you have self-compassion. So if you have love and compassion for yourself, you can also show compassion for other, uh, like instinctive, <laughs> instinctively. But uh, if you don't have empathy, for not everyone has, then you can learn to read how empathy works and how it, it works like a structure, like an objective structure in itself. Does the society work better with the structure of empathy? Or does it work better as a structure without empathy? What's the consequence though? if you're born with empathy or not empathy. But I think having the means of feeling empathy as a part of yourself, as a part of your birthright, 
like in spirit from the great spirit like you already started you got empathy use it it's a gift because you can only feel the amount of love you can comprehend within your soul so if you know what love is for yourself and something greater and yourself of course so so can you also know greater depths in creation it's like it's not like people then they can't uh, detach from feeling but we can also feel even more love when we don't detach it's a choice so yes i think uh, i think compassion is uh, is a strength to have according to your beliefs um love would be um the solution that helps people to connect with empathy, um, some people have a problem that they do consider others as objects, and ultimately they consider themselves as objects. Yes. And there is this gap between the people. Mm. And what would you recommend for them, knowing that somehow yes. they even don't love themselves? Yeah. They cannot consider themselves as a subject. They consider themselves as an object. As yeah. an object, they consider they're, they're imperfect. They're, they're not out of perfection. And uh, they're always complaining about what they are, never considering who they are. What would you recommend on this very particular and tricky situation? What I would recommend is know yourself first before you try to know someone else and mirror. Because this is mirroring uh, um, uh, a darker self. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say the wounded self, because not every beings are created just of light uh, or, uh, or of light and darkness. Some are also dark beings. You can be quite pure hearted uh, as, a, as a dark being as well. But you must, as a darker being who hasn't this uh, this uh, gift of love by birth, by soul, uh, a different being, because we must accept creation is fertile. And there are always this internal battle, which also becomes the external battle of good and evil. That's an everlasting battle. So this is a dilemma that will always uh, somehow pop up here and there in creation. So those who are born with less empathy and so forth can't show so much empathy for others so it can turn to a vicious cycle because they can give not so much love but they need confirmation of being loved themselves so they, they try to obtain something they don't have on the wrong terms so i think they uh and then they start to mirror themselves in creation as they treat others subconsciously but consciously this can turn into a life, uh, life lie. So they see the ego self mirroring themselves in creation or in real life. But on the inside, they get conflicted because they don't find their match. So my question when I'm thinking is a little bit like, how can people who, are, who, who work in society and doesn't have so much love uh, to give a flight love or what we uh, normally define as love, but ownership can be a part of showing love as long as it's not destructive. So maybe creation needs to start to think a little bit anew as a healer in our time. Maybe we must start to embrace our differences and learn from each other, observe. Maybe a darker being needs a darker love. Maybe the light it needs exists. Maybe it should try to see, okay, you can rewire a brain, you know? We think by habits and we make synopsis when we think and we go in autopilot and, autopilot and stuff, you know? So, uh, what if a person who is dark is curious? What will happen to me and my ego? And how will I manifest my inner life if I try to rewire this thinking? How will this manifest in my outer world? So I always start, if I was a being who's a little bit dark, but still curious, what is this light, unconditional love? Not conditional love, what is this condition, unconditional love? I always think, yeah, let's try to rewire myself. Don't look at myself as an object. It's like, uh, try to smile in the mirror, even though you really don't want to smile. And eventually, you got to smile back. Because 
it's the point. When you smile, you're supposed to smile. Smile at yourself. Don't think of people as object. Uh, don't think of, so you don't think of yourself in a, as an object. What can you as a dark being offer as dark but respectful? You don't have to be unconditional, bright and light to be a part of creation that's necessary. We need the darkness just as much as the light. There are no stars on the sky that can shine without darkness. So yeah, so I would try to embrace my darkness and try not to be hurtful to others because even darker beings don't want to get hurt. They get the sense of hurt or damage. So I would try to take uh, 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 a place of observance in, in, uh, in the world and see how can I be the best version of myself. But if I want love, then I must be kind to others around me. So others around me who is not necessarily dark also can be around me so I can observe and learn about other parts of creation, how we make a whole of light and darkness alike. I think more is like, is it something that's pure or unpure? Pure darkness isn't evil. Pure light is good. So I would think pureness and not just uh, false ego, self. Yeah, I would, I would say that this person's, or kind of person think like that should, yeah, start observing and think, how can I, how can I be this glorious dark force I can be, but purely? How can I not be a pain in the ass to everyone else? How can I be a resource of dark? We're not supposed to copycat others. We're supposed to be vertical, different, interesting, challenging, and we're supposed to accumulate it, this into our strengths. But respect is the key, though. Of course, we have to know you. We, we, we have to know ourselves. Yeah. Then we'll rise up this eternal question, and everybody has his very personal way to approach it. And every healer has his own method, but what does it mean to view creation as a learning cradle for the soul's journey upon your sensitivity? Uh, I think for, from my point of view, it's uh, uh, the great origin of the universe, the creator behind creation. Um, he is like giving us a chance in this world to see ourselves uh, from different angles, uh, from within ourselves and how we perceive the world and its challenges and its growths and its victorious moments of self-exploration, of knowing friendship, of knowing hurt, uh, like being life alchemists, making life uh, sour moments into something uh, valuable and elastent, um, elastent, becoming warriors of life like uh, giving us depth. Uh, same thing as I said a little bit earlier, if we don't know how to be hateful or resentful, we don't know how to be tender and loving as well. If you don't get pissed off sometimes, you don't know how, f how it feels to feel so good about yourself or someone else or a setting in a different time. It's all about like the golden midway where, where we're trained in cradle and all these life experiences uh, in the outer world and this creates inner depth in ourselves. So we have to conquer this. We have to conquer fear. We have to conquer codependencies. We have to conquer insecurities. We have to conquer pride. And, and like we have to conquer <laughs> lust and us lust. We have to uh, conquer so many depths in ourselves. And the point is not to avoid the testing. It's to conquer, how am I going to be the best version of myself? How am I, through my life path, or my soul journey, becoming the best version of myself? So, if you only, in this life, because it is horrible, life is very, very cruel sometimes. Like heartache, death, grief, uh, isolation, sickness, you know, it's so much terrible. But this, this is like learning curves. So we can appreciate the, the good stuff, the healing, uh, the better days to come. If at least you have hope, for instance, you learn what hope is, hope in something better. 
working for gold, uh, using time as a measurement, uh, and, and stuff like that. So it's, I think it's designed a little bit like the Divine Matrix, where we really are a little bit gamers of life. <laughs> and uh, it's like God has the game fact, you know, he has the solution. He knows every little detail, even if you skip the next level in the game a little bit sooner. Yeah, you didn't collect all the coins, but okay, you level up regardless. So you, you all have this God who created the matrix, you know? This divine gamer kind of dude who sits up and adds this challenge, adds this reward. Okay, at 30, maybe it's a giant at the end of 30 because, wow, I'm, I'm getting older, you know? Uh, and this you have this giant you have to slay a little bit like but you slay it not all <laughs> not physically like warring with the metal and iron and axes and sword like you do in Zelda and stuff for instance but uh you 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 slay it by conquering yourself your 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 strength your inner inner self your you by not dying to weaknesses by choosing the narrow path of life uh, by choosing the mystery and not the end of it, uh, but choosing to not give up, but choosing to doing every fucking challenge into something good. And not all challenges challenges in life feels good. Some feels terrible, and you really don't want this, those testing. But somehow, if you do like look at life as you can be an alchemist of life, you can take every fucking thing into something uh, precious, like you make it your golden path like a holy path. And this is how you earn, uh, earn uh, your self-respect, your self-love, and, and the smile of your uh, creator of the universe, which might say, wow, that was well play played in the game of life. And this is what is so nice, for me, it's so nice to have a God because Sometimes when you, you have a challenge, you have to conquer it on your own because sometimes being alone is a part of a challenge. You know, you have to be comfortable in your own company or else it's just codependent. It's okay to be symbiotic with someone, but, but codependency means that you need someone else which you actually don't need to be happy. Or it's too tight. You have to, okay, maybe you need a person, but you, you're clinging too tight for some lessons I learn in solitude. And what is cool, when you go, and many healers go through phases of solitude. And what is cool as, is that for me as a person, I never feel alone. Because uh, in prayer I can say, ah, oh, I'm struggling with it, what am I supposed to learn? And I can feel like I, I get like a reassurance, like a game fact, like a voiceover. In prayer it says, ah, oh, don't worry, do this, it will be fine. Um, and for me it's like, if you really believe it's a divine matrix, which you can even explain quantum physics. Wouldn't it be cool to kind of impress the author of the game? Just like, <laughs> hey, did I do okay? Like, would you write me another game? Can I level up? Um, yeah, I <laughs> spoke in Norwegian for a second. Like, can I ask for this asset? I think I need this asset to this level. God, can I give it? So, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're speaking about Alchemia, Golden Path, yeah. Quantum Physics. Yeah. But what about our own experiences? In what way do we explore the depth of life and death during our soul travel upon your opinion and your own experience as well? I think it humbles us, to be honest. Uh, hmm. For me, it reminds me I really need a God above it all, outside the matrix, uh, who actually lets me live, for instance. It makes me dependent on my God to have a great life. Uh, it makes me also uh, hopeful that there can be something behind creation that awaits, which I cannot see because I'm not the planner. I'm not the author of life. And... Um, and it makes me excited if I did this with this lifetime. And here, I look back here, I could have done better. Here, I'm kind of proud of myself. This is, this is, there, here, I did good. Here, I'm proud of myself, God, for instance. Like, which path will this lead me to next? 
uh, it makes me expectant in a good way. Like having a God makes you a dreamer. It's like it's every good gifters, every good gift gifters. He, he is sort of humor, laughter, happiness, joy, joyousness, uh, care, sensuality, uh, friendship. Uh, truth, strength, uh, vengeance, uh, uh, all the kingdoms in the universe, and having a God that's not just limited to what we see here on earth. Like, I think if, um, if God is creative, which is the great artist, so wouldn't he create like magicians, uh, uh, shapeshifters, druids, because he can do anything. It's like, it's, it's just the sky is the limit, and when you dreamt enough what you can do as a person about what can I put under the sky's limit, God takes it over and says, great job, child. I can do more with what you gave. And I think that's, uh, yeah, for me that's fantastic. So, uh, life and death uh, doesn't sting so hard if you believe in a, li a life everlasting. Because then it, maybe it's just, it's also said that the world is an illusion, so maybe when you close your eyes and take your final breath of life and you in the illusion dies, who knows if you're just sleeping and waking up in a different kingdom. This is how great our God, I, God is. So at least my opinion. So it humbles me and it makes me safe regardless of what happens in a way I can't do without him. We're speaking about mysticism. We're speaking about spirituality. Yeah. But we're speaking as well about balance. Yeah. And unity. Mm. According to you, how does treating the body, but as well the mind. Yeah. And even if this concept could be tricky for some, the soul. Yeah. Treating all of them, the body, the mind, and the soul as one, contribute to healing and balance. Because we consider, uh, we consist of body, mind, and matter, or body, mind, and soul. Like soul, there's our unique identity. That's a spirit in us. Yeah, that's our identity. The body, the soul needs the body to have a temple. This is how we treat ourselves with holiness because we created with something that's holy so it's our temple for the soul and so and the soul is in ho is holy ground this is spirit soul is spirit so and the mentality mind like mind is how our soul is developing and using our persona our mentality we co-create with our creator how we respond to things our choices our free will choices so if you're going to develop a good mentality, yeah, you're going to be safe, you know? You're going to have a good life. You're going to explore yourself. You're going to be the best version of yourself. And you treat your body like shit. Then you're extracting life from yourself and strength from yourself. So your mind and your subconscious, uh, subconscious brain will always try to hold you necessarily in survival mode. Okay, I'm not getting right food. I'm not getting right uh, stuff to drink. Uh, uh, I have unhealthy habits. I don't work out. I stress too much. I sleep a little. I sleep too much. It's like if you don't take care of body, you always will move basically for you're never stronger than your weakest link. So then you will always build your foundation on your weakest link and if you don't take care of your body then the body will always say help me without me you can't survive and so it will inflict your mentality and it will inflict your soul's enlightenment because what you could use to keep your body in shape and fit the meditation healing yoga cleansing dieting and stuff like this yeah you lose those benefits if you don't take care of your body but if you do then the temple is free to, to um, uh, what is it called, hold the soul within its uh, physical boundaries. And your mentality is free to think how freely and not in survival mode. How hold the soul and protect the yourself, soul. How can I be the best version of myself? 
of course, of course. Yes. So you never, except we do have a body, we do have a mind, and we do have a soul. Soul is our identity. So if you fuck up one, if you fuck up, or if you take take care of body, okay, you do everything right with the body. Your soul is your soul. That's not questionable. So that's your uniqueness. So that that shapes everything. And so, but your fucking mentality. Everything, every time you think some, some, something, you think something that's dumber than you can do. Or you constantly do bad choices. And if you're really good at math, uh, you never do math, for instance. Or really good at physics, you never do physics. You never do anything to enlighten yourself or grow your mind. If, it, if you're into mysticism, you never explore anything. Because you're all about the body, 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 body. And then everything is out of balance. For body, mind, and soul has to be in balance. Yeah. Super important. So yeah, it has to be in balance. We, we we're never weak. We're never stronger than a weaker link we have. Uh, but I don't you, think you, you mean by but but this three level should be aligned. Yes, it's like if you yeah, yes, and then you open up if you believe like in chakra systems as I'm also stood up right now and learning about and th think it's very interesting, then we're opening up. Because we, if, we if we attack the body, we're constantly in survival mode. Then our root chakra is constantly unsolid. We're building on we're building a death. And if we're like rock solid in our body, but, uh, but solely speak, spoken, we only feed ourselves uh, trashy news, trashy knowledge, trashy we don't interest. We don't have healthy interest mentally. Then of course, then you then your then your chakra, your crown chakra and third eye, it would be completely unaligned with the other ones, and you wouldn't read the higher chakra, which is over here, not like the first one, but the the, uh, the white ones it gets more in the aura. Seventh chakra, coronal. Yeah. Could you tell us what your t-shirt is about? I'm very <laughs> tried and curious about this t-shirt. Yeah, that's uh, something I bought online because I like uh, I like uh, clothes uh, with a statement, and it's a parallel t-shirt and says "Faith or Fear." <laughs> so uh, that's the best hmm. thing I can do because I'm only me, but God is everywhere. Like He's the origin of the universe. So. And nothing is a coincidence. It's, it's quite good at details. So, um, faith over fear. Well, and me and myself also struggle up with anxiety. So, faith over fear. Very good. <laughs> what well, one of the main um, topic and symbol of your very own healing is love. Love as a healer. Now we're speaking about faith, which plays a role as well. How does faith? play a role in the healing process for me in person for me it's essential i can't heal without believing it's a for you of course and yeah and this is for, a little for bit everyone. how you learn in reiki as well because they tap into the healing force of the universe you enlight you activate your own healing strength because i really as a healer believe helping other people heal themselves but uh, as Reiki, as I was taught, <laughs> it's like, uh, and it goes very well what I think uh, instinctively, but instinctively as well, because if you help others to activate their own healing ability, their own life force, their own inner strength, I think, yeah, like she or, or the Kundalini and stuff like this, and let them, and as a healer, which I'm learning in Reiki, uh, is then then I can activate uh, a client with with this um, uh, energy, help them uh, activate their own energy. But the best thing is when they maybe learn to not deactivate themselves, so they don't need to go to a healer because they've learned not to deactivate when it's activated. And um, uh, like Reiki is the life life force of the universe, and as a healer, we're conducts like light bearers who like to transmute this energy so i'm not healing with my energy i feel my gifts are my gifts i'm healing someone else by opening up this person my client's energy activating 
but but guided, strengthened by the life energy of the universe. So it's not me that heals. It's God that the God I believe in that heals through me. And God isn't limited to one religion. He is God everywhere. So this is the universal. Every every person has a name on something bigger than themselves. This is the energy we tap into. The energy of the universe. We're speaking about the universe. Upon your opinion, universe have some special powers. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> what would it mean to believe that everything is possible in connection with the universe? Mm. What it means? It means that God is omnipotent, almighty. Can't do anything. I can do nothing without my God, but I can do a hell of a lot with him. So it's a little bit like if if you believe you can do it, you probably can, kind of thinking. And if you don't reach your goal, you reach a bigger and better goal, spiritually spoken. So a God who can who who does everything without any limitation is a God that's supremely in control. Uh, if uh, someone is good at knowledge, God has the upper knowledge for next level. If someone's good at athletics, God has a different challenge next time. If someone's good at healing, he will still be the healing force of the universe because he has also created sickness and death and despair. So what he has given, he can also take away. So this makes him, of course, the greatest healer because he's the designer of all the evil and despair and hurt in the world as well. So he can take it away anytime. But we can't. We have to learn. <laughs> And this is why we're giving like cool challenges in a way because it's so many mysteries and so many possibilities in this cradle of life or in this domain my matrix i actually do believe in that it is which uh we can explore our depths in so many ways it's like uh i had a a, a game once because i like to game I grew up with two brothers and I've been gaming since the 80s. So they had like Commodore 60 feet, uh, computers, super cool. <laughs> Love gaming. And, um, and um, um, yeah, I lost the chat. That's the thought of my, of my childhood. Yeah, I love gaming. Yeah. Uh, what, what are I saying? Of course. <laughs> um, you mean by that, but who are somehow mediums and there's no healer which is creating the healing by himself but he's just the middleman between the patient which is healed and the forces of the universe and the healer position himself in between yeah in a way but but if i could add because this is how one reality is because we can't distract the disease the god of the universe doesn't allow us to distract we can't heal someone he doesn't allow because he won't take away the sickness so we have to be reliant on him but for our own self-love and feel like i'm uh, i'm a child of the universe uh i've gotten i've gotten some challenges and i'm doing well for myself and i'm doing the right stuff and i'm learning the right techniques in this way we're giving great ability to grow our own strengths so in a way he is the author of the game and that's not on discussion but but what how we um, yeah like the game i forgot uh skybrim where you can choose to be any hero you like you can be dark you can be light you can be anything it's like many scrolls it's many games and it's the same thing if you do something really really in a nice way god gets proud of you and say wow and of course then you are a, suddenly a better healer than someone who doesn't give a fuck because you have invested wisely and this is also about it, it's like every god is um every god you can think of every 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 faith every scripture is a god of consequence it's a right and wrong uh, if you do good, uh, if you invest good in yourself, it pays off. If you do good to others, it's good karma. It's like 
everything has a consequence. So of course, if you invest wisely in yourself, then you get better as a version of yourself. And this is how God is a cool creator. Because it, 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 <laughs> it is actually possible to level up if you do good choices in the game. We are now the mean term of our interview. <laughs> Time for us to present to you our program at the gates of great power, which helps you to realize and understand who are you, what is your role, what is your goal in the universe, and how to keep, choose, and hold the best direction on your life, which will help you to realize all your desires. The theory of attraction is a phenomenon that we know very well among quantum physics researchers. Two particles were separated at birth during the Big Bang. Even when far apart from each other, from one end of the universe to the other, they remain connected. They are linked. Touch one of them and the other will react at the other end of the cosmos. According to string theory, when going towards the infinitely small, even smaller than a particle, we realize that everything is just vibration. Particles would actually be vibratory phenomena. Here, the emission of a vibration influences another. Similar energies attract similar energies. Thus, three actions are necessary to attract events and modulate the manifestation, to provoke what is called synchronicity in physics, or more commonly, attraction. It is required to carry out three types of conditioning. One, position yourself in tune with the universe which includes mental deconditioning, but of letting go. Two, increase your vibration to accelerate your own momentum, which includes ego deconditioning, detachment. The immediate effect will translate into astonishing self-confidence. Three, adjust your consciousness, not by positioning yourself on your physical body, but on your subtle body. To do this, it is necessary to operate five fundamental connections. Connect to plants. Your slow but obstinate consciousness will expose you to the power of progress and inexorable adaptability that will allow the routing and development of your project. Connect to stones. The mineral element supports memory. It is associated with thought, and this will expose you to the power of speech and eloquence. But both your charisma and your ability to convince will develop. Connect to the wind. This favors your ability to always be in motion, whether physically or intellectually. 
The wind is pure flexibility, but above all, it is penetrating, it represents receptivity. You will be able to integrate information effortlessly, learn and memorize without difficulty, like a real recording machine. Connect to animals. Animals' ability to discern lies from authentic attitude will connect you to your emotional intelligence. You will learn to become authentic yourself. It is by connecting to animals that you will connect to your own humanity. This will generate an irresistible feeling of solidarity towards you in others. Connect to the sun. It will generate lights, consume obstacles, provoke a feeling of patience in those who approach you. And above all, awakening love. They will love you in spite of themselves, whether they want it or not. Hey, welcome back. Catherine, could you tell us upon your sensitivity and your own research, how does having an authentic life on earth bring blessings from the universe? Mm, to have uh, your own life uh, on earth regardless um, of which creation you are from spirit uh, adds the touch of divinity that we all need in ourselves even a person who doesn't believe in a god at all which is okay uh, still seeks for something grander than themselves Maybe it's the holy grail of knowledge, holy, holy grail of science. Uh, or for a mystics, uh, mystics, it's maybe uh, unlocking the code, the codex of an ancient role. Um, uh, and stuff like that. Um, Would you believe in free will? Yeah, free will is like you have you have the choices uh, as part of the matrix to make choices that afflicts you, your involvement, your enlightenment, your skills, uh, your strength, your weaknesses, what you focus on, enchanting, actually adds even to the blessing of your life or to the burden of your life. If you constantly sink your own ship, of course, eventually you will sink. So we have a free will also to choose to not sink our ship and keep ourselves afloat so we can enjoy the journey of soul or of life and sail through the life, the, the seas of life, of creation, like surfing, surfing sky high instead of just uh, giving up. So you have a choice to give up as free will as well. You can say, God, I don't bother. I don't want to evolve. I don't get it. I don't give a shit. I don't, I don't bother. That's a choice. Free will in creation gives us a choice to be independent, to be unique, to shape ourselves, to co-create our own destinies. Some things are pre-written, some challenges God will ordain for you, no matter what. But we can, to some degree, co-create. Okay, you did well here, that unlocks this path, instead of path of self-suffering, self-defeat, false ego, okay. Everyone has to go battles within the self, uh, conquering the self, uh, false ego of self as well, to find the true, uh, uh, true face of your real ego, which is, which is healthy. Because ego is like neutral. It doesn't have, it's not good or bad. It's what it is. It's what you use to prune yourself, the result of how you uh, prune your ego and, and how God wants to prune the ego that produces the result of a good ego or a bad ego. So I think free will uh, opens up more possibilities to be something more than if we didn't have free will at all.
because we have a choice to choose. Like in a game and you level up with a note grid. It's like someone knows you stop and can take a pause. And some are enlightenment nodes and you get to choose in those kind of games which enlightenment nodes you wanna enlighten up and, and which strength in game or which hero you're gonna strengthen in your own game. And this is how we can see it. We have attributes, we have a solid entity. We have a uniqueness in who we are, but we are given a choice to strengthen or weaken ourselves. So free will opens it up as a game and not just a static game sh telling show. Anyway, it opens up for possibilities, uh, more challenges, more depth, more fun, more agony, more of both. It opens up for life and death, for instance. How can I believe in the universe? Yeah. Believing that we have a soul. Believing that we have a mind mm -hmm. which is subtle and a body as a vehicle that we have to take care of. Yeah. We free will will it impact our relationships with others. Yes, I think so to very much actually because we have a choice to be uh, two choices. We have three choices. We have a choice to be the best version version of a self uh, towards a creator or through the origin of the universe. Okay, we're part of the universe. Uh, are we going to be a cool building block? Are we going to be a nuisance? And stuff like that. And we have a relationship with ourselves. So uh, we choose to be the version of a self we want to be or the one or a version of ourselves that we don't want to be. And this afflicts, this is free will choices. So here we can add up or not to add, add up to God of the universe. We can add up and not add up towards ourselves. And this actually shapes us. So when you're meeting the world, which choices did you make? Well, you're producing this version of yourself to others out in the world. So of course, if you're this as kind of person who don't only do crap to people, never a loyal friend and stuff, then of course you have free will choice to be rude to people, but then you will meet people who also are rude to you or it doesn't like you. But if you choose to be a good friend, a team builder, a go-getter, like an influence in a good way, a builder, okay, then you act and you meet people in the world, then you act good in your surroundings, you act good to your creator and you actually uh, will attract people who does the same. Because you would attract like-minded and they will be comfort comfortable around you. Because you have the same sets of goals and the same standards and the same aspiration to do something, creation, like live or walk in the same path. So you have a free will to be you in the way you want to be. You have free will to be who you want to be to the God of the universe. And you have free will to choose how you want to be to your <laughs> to the rest of creation. So and this, of course, inflicts a lot, because if you didn't have free will, there would never be a choice. It would only be forbidden. And can anyone with themselves, when they sit and listen, actually say, I have never taken a conscious choice myself ever? And if they have, then they made a free will choice. Because they have, think, they have thought a thought, and they have thought of options, and they have concluded for a choice. That's a free will. In that way, you can prove to yourself a little bit. I think so I am. As a conscious being with a free will to choose. I think so. So it does, it does open up for more. more. More agony, but also more love. More challenges, but also more rewards. Greater rewards, greater battles. Without free will, lesser, lesser, lesser challenges. But uh, not everyone maybe have free will, but it is a concept and it, it's a concept and conceptual thinking. It's very cool because it opened up for so much more. It's opened up for this person. You might look at his 30s and think he's probably going to be this because that's your conditioning looking at him at that level. But something in him is very hidden. So when you look at him at 50, is that, is that the same guy? <laughs> that, that's so much difference. I can't believe it. Because some treasure maybe in him is hidden. 
which didn't uh, bloom in the first surroundings. But later on in life, he found a surrounding that's better because of his life choices, because uh, he responds better to the game of the universe. So he levels up and then he starts to bloom. And the person which, when he was 30, looks, uh, maybe looked down on him, would say, wow. So think and be so, if it was pre-written, there would never be a choice to do something different. We can choose to do different, and that's cool. I think so, yeah. <laughs> Some people are considering a lot all this theory of law of attraction. They like to make wish wishes to the universe. And somehow we may consider that the wish to the universe could be associated as some kind of prayer. Mm. How does a personal prayer yeah. develop a relationship with the whole? Oh my gosh. It gives you the sacred space you need for your soul to have a room that's private where we're held and where you're created with purpose like the creator of the universe never creates anything that he doesn't that he's not aware of that he has created so everyone can rest it God always has a purpose with every creation he made and if you're able to not hide for the glorious gift and the vastness of having a soul space with a God who writes life, who can explain you, why did you fit in? Why did this go wrong? Why did I lose my friend at that party? Why this heartache goes so wrong? Uh, and stuff, especially when you vent. Um, I rarely vent to people, I actually vent to God. And for me that's a gift because um, he knows my soul. He knows, uh, he knows me better than I do myself sometimes. And he listens, not just to my heart and my emotions and my mind, but also listens to, uh, listen as the, uh, listens to my life, in a way, my essence, my soul. So, and everyone is created by God. Everyone has a purpose. And what I think is so terrible in this world, and this can scare people to not be able to pray to God and be scared of thinking that someone is above, is the fact, because you always have to fit in, you always have to achieve, you're always on your own. It's like, conquer the world, but for who? For what? With who? So, uh, with whom? So, like... Yeah, it's uh, it's difficult, but uh, the world today is so um, busy conforming everyone to for to fit in like puzzles, and this is a plot twist in the game because not everyone is supposed to fit in. Not every puzzle is to be puzzled the same way, and not every piece is alike. And you can't. The world today is trying to weave the same picture with the same pieces so it's very conform and the gift of life is is if you think of star seeds like some are dark seeds some are light seeds <laughs> some are a little bit of both and some are just bad seeds and that's also life not everyone is created to be everlasting and uh, but some are uh, and not everyone is created to be light uh, but some are and not everyone is created to just be dark but some are and not everyone is darkness and light alike, but some are that as well. Uh, and with a God that's unlimited, like the great artist, we limit him. He's so mean. He's so boring. There's no laughter. There's no love. There's no fun. And and this is uh, this is pointless because that's not the God we have. He's just as much light as he is dark. This is creation, all of it. So I think in a higher enlightened state than we are today. We should learn to cultivate our resources, and every seed is a resource. Even the dark ones, even the bad seeds that doesn't normally, that's not even everlasting. So, so everything has a purpose. And this greatest mystery from, from my part, of course, is love. Seeking God first and seeking love. Uh, that's unconditional love, because for me, that's like the best concept in the world. But 
if it, but the, the fact that every every single entity every single sub, subconscious conscious being in in the shape or form has a purpose uh, and makes every single life a mystery and everyone can own their own life mystery so if you ever try to game the game of life with the creator in prayer game to find the best version of yourself explore your own mystery don't envy someone else's mystery. Don't envy someone else's green grass. Because it's not your fucking grass. Envy what you can be in yourself if you have to envy something. Like, oh my gosh, wouldn't I like to be this version of myself? Yeah, use it like, effort, uh, use it, yeah, and, and build with God. Like, use your soul uh, uh, sacredness in prayer. To, to plan your life with God. We can be co-creators of our destinies. This is a joy of creation. We have a God who smiles at how good he is to create life as well. It's not just mean. It can be very joyous. So, yeah. A lot the of part people are... Is cool. A lot of people feel themselves out of directions. And still, we're, we were speaking about faith. We maybe consider why not as a form of direction by itself. <laughs> so, upon the principle of your healing, how does this faith in the universe's knowledge and abilities could shape our perspectives in life's challenges? Well, it makes it add up. It's like it's a big math question. And God is the one who says, uh, when you put light, this is the Ali sign. I don't want to know, I can't remember what it's called in English. When the, the, this is when you sum it up, the summing up sign. Like you add equation, this is my equation, this is going to add up, this is going to add up, this is going to add up, this is going to add up. And when you put the sum up, God has the answer. Regardless, if you fill it out wrong or 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 fill it out right, so um, so the way he adds to it, it's like yeah, it's the game fact. Yeah, you you play this game. Next level, maybe a space game. Okay, we're exploring space. Let's go out of space. Next level time. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, and um, but first we have to sum up this game. You know, like a big math question, and algorithms, everything. And uh, and God is the game fact. And like maybe you look at, back at your life and say, "Hey, are they there? Was it anything more I could learn from that uh, time of life, that challenge, from that friendship, for that relationship, for this family member relation I had, which was broken but but all simultaneously very nice, for instance." And you can say, "Yeah, yeah, you did good here, but here you might add something, and here weren't here weren't loving enough for yourself. If you loved yourself more and put boundaries." around protecting your self-love. Wouldn't this person be less complicated around you? Because every people like people boundaries. You might say we don't like it if we're a little bit toxic or immature, but everyone likes it because it's predictable. And a, a building a solid rock, everyone likes it. Dark, mean, bad seed, good seed, any kind of seed. We like to be solid foundations. We like to be we like to be solid. We like to be secure. Even those who live very recklessly in creation, they really, really like to be secure because they want to be safe. They don't want, they, very rarely people, even people are suicidal, really don't want to die. They're just very worn by life's challenges. So um, it's like, it, it adds up. So if you ever had look back in life in prayer and ask God, can you show me something I missed for this equation to add up before next game, next level? Yeah, it, it, it's, the, it's the voiceover, it's the right answer, it's the perfect answer. It's the teacher who said, correct, check out. We're talking about boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> then we can talk as well about limitations. Yeah. I would like to come back to the power of the faith. And here I'm, I would speak about these universal energies 
can the faith in the universe's limitless power could help some to overcome limitations in their own lives. Yes, what you can do, God can do. Simple as that. <laughs> I can answer short on that one. <laughs> yeah, you just have to ask. It also said you don't have because you don't pray. So yeah, and back to manifesting, praying, reaching out for the universe. And what's good about God is, um, um, is that he's denying no one. There are many ways to reach Rome. We all have to choose our own path. It doesn't, doesn't take away God for everyone. So many people are lost. Yeah. Sometimes they have no direction from the beginning. Sometimes they lose their way. Yeah. How does viewing creation as a learning cradle impact our understanding of the purpose of our lives? It, um, it gives us the necessary space to have someone who has the answer of life. There's always a possibility to ask the spirit in the universe, why am I? Who am I for you? Who will I become for me? Yeah, that's the answer. The universe hides the answer. And it's also okay to not know. You have to tap into prayer. It's like if you want to manifest something, you have to do the job of manifesting. If you want to spend time with someone, you must do the effort to actually put aside time to spend to get to know that person. This regards to the spirit in the universe. It also regards to yourself. If you never put time aside for yourself to get to know yourself, so you know how will I meet the universe with who I am, then you won't get to know yourself so well and you won't get to know the universe because you're not spending enough time with yourself you're not spending enough time with the universe you're spending too much time in creation not knowing who you are floating around and this is why it's good sometimes the universe mirrors mirrors us so what we need to reflect on in ourselves we meet in others through others by observing or through this same challenge over and over again. Like if two plus two is four, and we constantly say it's five, then, then the universe will constantly try to show us over and over what is two plus two, when, it's, when you're able to see it's four. Then you pass through the next level of yourself. So spend time with yourself to get to know yourself. Spend time with the universe to get to know the universe or else it's not possible or else you would just have a fictive thought of something you should be which you're not working on. Knowing thyself without spending time with yourself. Knowing the universe without actually attaching to anything that would be a considerable friendship in any way in spirit, subconscious, conscious, any. It's, it's about a choice. You have to spend time with those we, with those we want to get to know. If you want to get to know the universe, spend time with the universe. If you want to get to know yourself, please do spend time with yourself. If you want to get to know your new neighbor, yes, please do get to know your new neighbor. It's like, we ha yeah, we have to choose. And this makes it fun. It makes, it makes it rewarding. Yeah. I think so. That will be the conclusion of our talk. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Catherine, for your very inspiring speech. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Thank you, Professor. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. No, I will not. Don't forget to like. Of course. <laughs> and I will give you an appointment for our next, our next talking. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.